Let's get into the word of God quickly. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I think everyone should go ahead and listen to the first service message. Pastors, what do you think? You were here for the first service. It was really phenomenal. I, I really spoke about something that spoke to the hearts of business people and the principle for life. It's an honor. You know, um, Pastor Bolaji John told me that we we're also quiet because we're also convicted. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 3. So, we're talking about spiritual tools for quantum leap. One of the things we've established and want to establish again is this. That life has two sides. There's a spiritual side of life and there's what? There's a physical side of life. There's a spiritual side of life. There's a physical side of life. And one of the things this generation has done well is that we understand the natural things of life. We understand technology. We understand, you know, science and all of those kind of things. But a lot of us do not understand that there is the spiritual side of life. So in this teaching, and this is a challenge, when the natural side of life have challenges, the only way you are going to have a breakthrough is to step into the supernatural. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. All right. So one of the things I wanted to, to, to do in this teaching is this. And let me tell you what I want to do really. I want to help you know the spiritual tools we have. And how you, without the help of a pastor, how you can apply it to your business. I'll give an example. So, when you have a business limitation, let's say you need to raise a million, $1.5 million, and you cannot raise it because you don't have the natural capacity. How to use spiritual tools? The reason why is that spiritual tools can defy and break natural limits. How to use spiritual tools and bring that funding to pass? When they tell you that something is not possible in the natural, how to use the very spiritual tools to change it? Because the Bible says in the book of Mark, he says, with man or with natural method, this is impossible. But with God, all things are what? Are possible. That means if you go to the hospital and the doctor tells you that, I'm sorry, you know, just like a lady testified, the doctor said to her, I'm sorry, you have a blood fallopian tube. You cannot have a child. Now the lady is pregnant, expecting a child. And the doctor says, how did that happen? And the reason why is the use of spiritual tools. It's the use of spiritual tools. Maybe you're struggling and there's a strong competition for a contract. And people are pulling strings and you don't have any string to pull. Then we'll teach you how to pull spiritual strings that will change the dynamics of the things you want. Glory to God. Glory to God. Maybe the best place to start from first is to just kind of, um, kind of show you an example of what I'm talking about. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 10. Let, let, let's do that. Let's show you an example. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 10. Or maybe verse 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose you out men and go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hands. This shows two dimension to any successful business operation. This shows two dimension to any successful adventure project. He said there are two dimensions. Number one, you will have to do the natural. You have to be strategic. There must be that strategic. The business plan is there. There must be the marketing plan is there. Your human strategy plan is there. He said, but outside that, where you are doing that on the natural, there will be a hidden place where the rod of God, which is the word of God, will be held up. He said, as you are doing that on the outside, there is something we have done on the inside. You must understand, those people that win in the day really won at night. Did you hear what I said? Those people that really won in the day, they really won at night. When nobody was there, they were fighting invisible battles, laying spiritual foundation and infrastructure to achieve what they want. The major challenge is this. So there are two dimensions. Moses told Joshua, he said, one, get the soldiers, get the degrees, get certification, put out your application, go for the presentation, go for the negotiation. But as you're doing that, I will be behind raising up the word of God. That means that when your opposition are depending on paperwork, you are bringing spiritual influence to push things in your favor. Are you getting me, somebody? 
The challenge is that most Pentecostals, this is what we want to do. I command money to come. After you have prayed in tongues, go and get some things done in physical. The reason why is that it's not angels that will bring you the money. So some people are praying, Father, I receive my husband. Take it now in Jesus' name. After we have taken it, after the service, stay back. Be available for single men to talk to you. Glory to God. You can't be taking it at home and not going out and someone coming to your house and marry you. So there is a natural part, there's a spiritual part. You are commanding, 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 commanding. Have you started the company? You say, I'm still commanding. Commanding will not make you register the company. So there are two spots. And I'm saying so because this is the biggest problem. Because we Africans are quite religious, we are so dependent on the spiritual part that we become physically irrelevant. And some people, because they are mentally advanced, they are so dependent on the physical part, they neglect the spiritual. And they do not understand that the spiritual is remote control function. Remember when I said remote control? You know, remote control function? What's remote control? You do not see how the remote control affects the channel, but the channel changes. That's what the spiritual is. In the spiritual, we keep pressing. And the channel is changing. We keep pressing. We keep pressing. We keep pressing. So, you will see things changing. You will not see what is changing them because we are changing them on the realm of the spirit. Glory to God. Let's keep reading. So, Moses says, you go and fight. I will go and do this. And it came to pass, the Bible says this in verse 10. And Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek, Moses, Aaron, and all went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass as Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. There was something about what was done. And this is the thing. You know the thing about supernatural? Nobody sees when it is done. Nobody knows how it is done. But we see the result if it's done. No wonder the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 that he that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. That we just, we do not see where it's coming from. But we see the effects. And the Bible says this. He says, as Josh, as, uh, you know, as um, Moses was lifting up the rod of God in his hands, they just noticed a phenomenon that in the marketplace, Joshua took over the market. They noticed that Joshua was beating competition. They wonder what is going on. They are looking at the strategy. They are looking at the concept. They are not factored into it what corner activity. What we are teaching you today is corner activity. Where 40 people are applying for something, all of you are equally employed. And they are wondering who has the advantage. Your advantage is the corner. It says your father sees you pray in the secret to reward you openly. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? Alright, let's go ahead, let's go ahead. And let me say something about spiritual principles there. Eh? Something may be working in your life that you may not know is working. I'm telling you, you need to be observant to know this is what is happening. How do I know? Look at, look, 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 look at verse, look at um, verse 12. And the uh, Bible says this, verse 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. And um, when he laid down his hand, the Amalek prevailed. I'm not sure that Moses really realized that it was the raising of the hands that affected the battle. If he did, he would have not done that. But guess what happened? This is what happened in the next verse. But the moment they realized, they did not allow Moses to ever put down his hand again. Why am I saying this thing to you? There can be spiritual operation in your life and you don't know that anything is happening. I'm telling you, you will not know. Some things will happen is a seed you saw last year. You don't know that that's what has happened. Until God opens your eyes and you can carefully see that, my God, this is it. Long and short of the story, when they realized that the hand of Moses was affecting the battle, you know what they did? They began to get Aaron and all to hold the hand of Moses so that they could have permanent victory, which they had. What I wanted to show you was this, how the supernatural can control the physical. Because you must remember, the physical is a child of the supernatural. The physical is a product of the supernatural. Hebrews 11.3 says that, through faith we understand that the things we see were made out of the things we do not see. Meaning that the things we see are the product of the invisible raw material. So if the supernatural made it, supernatural can control it. There's nothing wrong with iPhone that iPhone cannot fix. 
because iPhone made it. If the supernatural made the physical, there's nothing wrong with the physical that they cannot fix. The iPhone might not be able to fix itself, but there's nothing wrong with the iPhone that Apple cannot fix because they made it. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. We want to get really deep tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. He says this. This one I want to show you. We're talking about spiritual tools, right? It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thought to the obedience of Christ. I wanted to show you something here, just how it works. So, Paul begins to explain to us that, hey, there are spiritual realities and there are spiritual weapons. That's what he's saying here. Why do we need spiritual weapons? This is the reason why. The spiritual laws and spiritual natural laws can always break the limits of the flesh. The human law says water cannot be turned into wine. Spiritual law says I can turn water into wine. The law says when a snake bites you that he's poisonous, you will die. Paul says snake beats me. He overrode the snake by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, read the Bible. A snake beat Paul. They say this guy's a criminal. Paul took the snake, shook it up in the fire. People expect that it will get poisoned. Paul said, you don't understand. I have the life of God in me. The life of God swallows up sickness. The life of God swallows up death. Romans 8 says it this way. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, it will quicken our mortal body. Quicken means it will make it alive. So, if they say you have a low sperm count, you don't understand. The Bible says if the spirit of God is in you, life will come into your body low sperm count will be consumed that's what the bible says what the bible says light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it he said there's light in your body once you have light the light will consume the darkness are you here somebody <laughs> the bread had finished and when the bread finished just Christ said let's feed the multitude because some of you are looking for capital and you wonder there's no capital. Just Christ said, what do you have? He said, I don't have what I need, but I have something. Just Christ took it. As he broke it, the bread multiplied. Why? In the spirit, multiplica- multiplying power can enter into bread. What does that mean? Once you are looking for something, what you have can become a miracle. Water turned into wine. Let me explain what water turned into wine means. Water is common value. There's a way the power of God can come on common value that can make it wine on common value. So much so that you're a photographer. The power of God comes on that photography. It moves from common value to uncommon value. That's what it means. When you see that miracle of water turning into wine, what God was saying is I can take common. The same business has made you 100,000 per month. The anointing can come upon it can make you 1 million per month. Glory to God. So the question now is this, and this is where I want to do the question. How do I, <laughs> how, so what are the spiritual tools and how do I apply them? Yeah, that's good. Let's read 2 Corinthians 10 again. I want to show you some things here. These people do not look at as spiritual tools, but I want to show you today. It said, though we walk in the flesh, still we're in the physical, we do not walk after the flesh, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What are these weapons? But they are mighty to the pulling down strongholds and cast their imagination. The weapons, firstly, are in the imagination realm. Two weapons I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the weapons of thoughts and words. The weapons of what? Thoughts and words. I'm going to explain to you how people are attacked by demons. Let me tell you something. You know, many of you watch a lot of African magic, so you don't understand what spiritual attack is. They say demons suck blood. Nonsense. I'm telling you, demons don't suck blood. That's the truth. There's no reference in the Bible that demons suck blood. That's how I know they don't suck blood. Question, what do they suck blood for? What do they use it to do? Can spirits eat or drink? I want to ask you a question. Can spirits eat or drink? So, all this concept we carry over from African magic, from African traditional religion, you say, no, 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 that a demon is sucking their blood. Who is sucking whose blood? How are they sucking it? When the body died, didn't they find blood in his body? 
Because most of us don't understand demonic operations. So today, I want to show you practically the realm of the Spirit. I will show you what demons do and how they do it. So that once you understand it, you know how to stop it. And I will show you when you want to create a change spiritually. This is how you create a change spiritually. So, I first of all, have to, you, know, you have to cancel the nonsense. That demons suck blood. Demons live in, you know, um, they suck blood. They, all those kind of things. Those are not demons of the Bible. Those are demons of Africa. Because biblical demons don't behave non, like nonsense. You know, they, they behave according to function. Praise God. All the time in the Bible, you never see a demon that says, our job is to suck blood. Where did they get it from? They get it from people that were possessed before. That become born again. And they'll be telling you what was happening there. Did they know what was happening there? They were in darkness. Could they see? When they were in the court, they were in darkness. You need to stop using people's opinion to tell you what the truth is. God's word is enough. Are you here, somebody? All right. So, how do demons operate? Let's go. So, notice what we said in 2 Corinthians 10. It says, imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought. So, let's go to another scripture. James chapter 1, verse 13. James chapter 1. Verse 13. James chapter 1, verse 13. I want you to notice your operations. Just play part and make it a bit stable. Yes, thank you. All right. James 1, 13. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil neither does he tempt any man with evil so what happens in temptation see how demons tempt people the same way they tempt people is how they attack people the same principle of temptation is principle of attack what do they do he says every man is tempted when it's drawn of his loss the loss is not a bad word loss means desire it means a thought and when the loss has enticed him then the loss will bring forth sin and sin is done brings forth that what does that mean the primary way, everybody listen to me, the primary way Satan attacks people is their thoughts. That's where I'm going to. The primary way Satan attacks people is where? In their thoughts. The Bible says, give no place to Satan. Where was the place? In the mind. The primary place Satan attacks people is in their thoughts. The primary place of spiritual warfare is in the mind. Let me show you. You're going to find this in the scriptures. Let's turn to John chapter 13 verse 2. You're going to see this. You are going to see how Judas is kind of became Judas the evil. He was attacked. He didn't know. John chapter 13 verse 2. Are you here? Yes, you, will you take it right? John 13 verse 2. Let's go. Want to go? And the supper being ended, Satan what? Uh, having what? How did Satan use Judas? The first thing was that he put the thought in his heart. How do you know if you are coming under satanic attack? Satanic attack comes first in the thought region. The thing will just tell you, you never make it in life. You thought it was suggestion. It was an attack. It will just say, you will never make it in life. You know why? Why? Look at James chapter 1. I, I, I'm, I'm going to believe the scripture party pursue because you need to get it. I'm using scripture to balance scripture. James chapter 1. Let's go back to James chapter 1. He says in verse 14. When every man is tempted, is drawn away of his own loss. The loss is the thought of desire. And, and is what is enticed. And when the loss or the thought are the word conceive. So what the devil puts there is that he puts the thought there. And if you accommodate the thought, the thought will conceive in your life. It will tell you, nobody can marry you. You don't know your own attack. He will tell you, but you know this place will fail. You know? And let me tell you something. Even he's there. He will tell you, you have cancer. You will touch your breast like this. Say, hey, you feel something hard. It's breast cancer. The first thing he does, he puts the thought there. You don't know. That's why 7 Corinthians says, we cast down imagination. Hallelujah. Every thought, bring it to the middle of Christ. How did Judas Iscariot become Judas? He put the thought in him. This man is not a good man. Betray him. You know what the first thing he does? The first thing he does, he puts the thought inside. Once you receive the thought, it conceives. You know what? He himself will not enter. 
Let me show you now. John 10, John, John, <laughs> you will see this in the Bible. John 13 verse 2. Let's read it again. It will conceive. John 13 verse 2. Let's read it again. I want to go. And the supper being ended, Satan having what? Put the thought into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him. For him now, the thought was a thought of betrayer. Some people is a thought of delay. Some people is a thought of failure. It will just tell you that you know that you will never be married. He will put the thought there. Look at this. He will look at So look at it. This was not when he put the thought there. The thought was already there. This was when the thought was acknowledged. Look at verse 27. 26, 26, 26. 13, 26. Read the same chapter. At the back. In Jesus' name, move forward. John 13, 26. Read now. Want to go? And Jesus answered, It is him to whom I shall give the sub. And he gave it to Jesus carried the son. Verse 27. And after the sub, what happened? Did you hear that? Satan had put the thought first. Then, by the time Jesus Christ said, you will betray me, gave him the food. He said, I will. Satan now entered inside. That's how thoughts destroy people. Let me give you how it works. You're running a business and the devil just tell you, you know this thing will crash. He said. The thing is that, you know when the devil still wants to talk to you, this is the way you think about it. Who, who is here with me? Um... Yeah, come, come, come. This is the way you think of the devil. Face everybody. This guy runs a business. They will say, I will crash your business. Satan so doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk in third person language. He will talk in your voice. He will say, This my business will crash. He will say it in such a way you cannot differentiate. Either it's a thought or it's what? A suggestion. So you will not say, say, this my business will crash. You will not say, you will not say, that's true. This my business will crash. As you say it, it conceives. It will tell you, we can, this year is over. We can. He said, this year is over. We can't make anything from this year. He said, that's true. What can we do in November? This year is over. As you say it, you confirm it, because the Bible says, through your words, you will confirm it. Once you say it and agree, you have now opened up for Satan. He was not inside before. But that's what the Bible says. Give no place to Satan. Once you say it, he now says, angel, he has agreed. Enter and take operation. He will not do it. He now say, yes, I knew it already. You will not understand that it's the dynamics of your thoughts that makes it happen that way. Thank you. God bless you. Where's the drink? Where's the water? The water, the glass, and the drink? Yeah. Give, me the, give me a glass. Do you have a glass? I'm going to show you something. Do you see, do you, did you see the devil? This is what the devil does. Just pour the water in here. The reason why that a lot of people, and I need a blanket, the blanket is also. Thank you. You can put down the water. This is how everybody is without demonic attack, transference. Your life is, your finance is working well. It's going well. Your marriage is working well. I will get married at this. Your ministry is working well. I'll do this. Business is working well. I'll do this. When Satan wants to attack, this is what he does. All he does, open this. He just puts one negative thought. See one negative thought. Just a shot. Just a shot. Just a shot. Not a lot. Just another shot. Just about three more of that. Yeah. When he puts the thought, what happened? Listen to me. From inside, you define yourself. And a lot of people have become negative because a thought was put inside. They never knew they were under attack. When people understand this, you understand that you're under attack. And the attack is not that they're sucking blood. It's that something has gone wrong with your mind. There are people in this place that feel as if their life is not worth it. There are people under the sound of my voice today. They feel as if, who can marry me? I know I can't be married. There are people on the sound of my voice that nobody in the family can do well. How did you know? They put the thought inside. How should I prove that to you? When Satan met Adam and Eve, he told them something. When God met Adam and Eve, what did he say? By the time Adam spoke, God told Adam, he said, mm, something has polluted you. 
something has polluted you. Who told you what you just said? Ah, he said, Adam, in the spirit, you have been polluted. Who told you? Satan keeps polluting people by telling them things. Are you hearing what he's telling you or you're hearing something else? And these are people, are, and, and they begin to pray. They don't understand. They've been polluted from the inside. You want to receive more? We're going to see how this ritual attack works. If you can see how it works in negative, you will see how it works. Your friend will just come and say that, ha, you are living up a marriage. Don't worry. We all cannot be married. Can you imagine? You know? Are you me? How can you say we all cannot be married? If you don't want to marry, that's your business. How can you, how can you join this on my own? I'll give, you, I'll give you a story. There's a guy that I, I know used to write like write income, 10 million, 20 million. In his office, he was a clerk. He would put the check in a small cubicle in the office. One day, his MD came in. It wasn't a big office. MD was not very rich, but it was comfortable. See? Huh. They are writing all these big figures. You better don't do this to yourself. You just break your heart. You know that people like us, we can't, at least, if you become like me, it's okay. All this one you are dreaming, 100 million, 200 million, don't break your heart, oh. And let me tell you something. As good as that suggestion is, it was telling him something. The guy said, that month I resigned. He said, I went back three years to that company. I was, I was living in the car that I wanted. The guy saw me and said, my God, I can't believe this. Sometimes what they say is not as if they hate you. It's from where they are. And some people, their mouths are borrowed by Satan to attack you. Let me tell you something, eh? If you are driving and the damn food driver abuses you, will it affect you? No, because there's no connection. The people that they are what will affect you the most are those that are close to you. So Satan goes to those that are close to you and use their mouth to attack you. How do I know? Who did, Pete, who did Peter attack? Peter was close to Jesus Christ. He was the one that used his mouth to attack Jesus. Jesus being a master in the spirit world, as he said it, he said, Hey! He said, Peter, I can see. He said, Hey, Peter, I see. That thing you said it was not you. That's not your brain. I know your brain. That thing, there was a momentary possession of your mouth to say these things. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read this. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, some of you, you will just be thinking that you will die. I'm, I, a lady met me one day. She said, Pastor, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I, don't have, I don't have miscarriage. I said, you will have it. I said, you will have it. Why are you pregnant and the first thing that comes to your mind as a normal human being, because the lady is under spiritual attack. She does not know she's under spiritual attack. It's the attack that is making her see miscarriage instead of baby. Many of you are here, you can see yourself going back to the village. You are under attack already. You don't know. You are under attack already. How can a normal human being that is progressive just say, ah, things will not work out well, I'll just go out to the village. You are even making contact already. How far? Is it still okay? You, you are, I'm telling you because the first attack is in the mind. I will show you now. <laughs> there are mothers that just think that their children will die before them. I read a story like that. The woman said that she was pregnant and she stayed crying. And he said, why are you crying? He said, because I thought about it. I will have this child. It will be okay. At the age of two, he'll be crawling. By three, he'll, he'll be crawling. But it's one day I'll be in the kitchen. He will walk out of the house. A car will knock out the child and he will die. You must know that there are no natural thoughts. All thoughts are sponsored from the realm. You just look at yourself and you say that I'm not good enough. Don't you know you're under satanic attack? How do you know that? God says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. So whatever, who said the other one? Whoever said that must be demonic. You look at yourself and say that, who will marry me? I'm not good enough. You look at yourself and who will marry me? You are under satanic attack. You are not aware. These are realms of the spirit, sir. Hebrews chapter 6. Sorry, Ephesians chapter 6. Oh, shaman. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> because when there was a spiritual attack, you know, most people don't understand how this thing works. There are many of you that are doing businesses, you want to scale to 200 million in your heart you can't see yourself doing it who knows what i'm talking about you can you, it's not if you cannot pray oh but even when you pray ever look at me when you say father i want to scale 200 million your mind to do this in your mind how can you scale 
Meanwhile, in the physical, shaka, paka, shaka. And guess what? Whatever your mind cannot agree with cannot enter your life. There are people praying that their husband will get better. Meanwhile, their mind says he can't get better. I know girls that say, I don't know, no, no. I, know, I know my husband will cheat on me. I know he was going to beat me. No, no, let, let's be. How many of you have met girls that say, what's wrong with a man beating a woman? Wave if you have met someone like that. You can see examples. Or that people have met someone like that. The reason why is that when you're under spiritual siege, you are never aware that something's wrong with you. You would think what is wrong with you is normal. That's why when people are really poor, they don't know they're poor. People that know they are poor are not poor. They've gone one class ahead. The really poor people, have you gone to the villages? They don't even know there's something wrong with them. Praise God. Are you getting it? All right. Hey. Ephesians 6 verse 16. So, what are the primary spiritual thoughts and words? A primary spiritual thoughts in the spirit. Thoughts and words. So, I will show you how so that you cannot use it positively. Thoughts and words are primary spiritual thoughts in the spirit. Let's read to go. Want to go? Above all, what does he say? Yeah? Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Fold it well, please. Yeah. Hold on, hold on for me just one minute. They've destroyed my... Oh yeah, put it together. I just want to... Yeah, thank you. I want to move it this way. Oh, when men are folding things, we know there'll be a problem. Yeah, it's only single men. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you again. This is just an improvisation. He said, take what? Why will we do what? Just hold it for me now. Let me explain what that means. Question, what are the fairy that of the enemy? Let me give what it is. The fairy that of the enemy are those dirty thoughts that comes like arrow. Bah! You are preparing for interview. You say, but you know they will not take you. Because you have no connection. You thought it was a thought. You'd be fired. Arrow has entered. You, you don't know. See, as a single girl, you just be going. But you know that you're not, you, to be pregnant would be difficult. Just like your auntie. You wonder, what concerns me with my auntie? Those are spiritual arrows. Pa! Things are going so well. Enjoy it too because it will soon go bad. These are the, don't you hate them in your ears? Something goes wrong, you are the only one things ever work out for. How can someone tell you that? Are you doing your own attack? The, but these are the, what the Bible calls what? It says, these are the fairy darts. So you are there, they're just throwing arrow at you. Pa! 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 Someone told me yesterday, um, somebody said, I have a pain in my breast. It comes once in a while. I just pray it's not breast cancer. I said, ah, ah. it's not as if you have a growth. Oh. It's not as if the pain is consistent. Oh. It's just once in a while, while your mind has gone, is breast cancer. You don't know that once the thought enters, the demon will follow. So this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, when you are fired for it out, this is your shield of faith. You hold it. When they fire you, what, what does faith do? Faith, the Bible says, we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. So the thing says, ah, and you will die. You will raise up your faith and say, how do you raise up your faith? By confession. What do you say? I shall not die but live. To declare the glory of God. You raise up your shape faith. They say that, ah, you will fail. You say, no, my servant shall not fail or be discouraged. You will say things will go bad for you. You say, no, he that has begun the good work with me will finish it to the day of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm raising the shield of faith. I'm raising the shield of faith. You lost money, said so I said you are finished. You said no. Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. What am I doing? I'm raising the shield of faith. I'm raising the shield of faith. You will lose the child. No, we shall not lose our young. Yeah, I'm raising the shield of faith. I'm raising the shield of faith. You will not be married. No. The Bible says no one shall lack his own mate. I'm raising the shield of faith. I'm raising the shield of faith. You will not have your phone. No. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. I'm raising the shield of faith. 
If you shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Are you here, somebody? I can't hear you at the back. Say amen. If you shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. If Satan opens fire, you open fire. If Satan opens fire, you open fire. Don't let the arrow enter. That was why when Satan came in Luke chapter 4, if you are the son of God, this is it. What the God just kind of said, Satan, I know you. And he said, it is written. He raised up the shield of faith. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If Jesus Christ was shielding it off, you don't let it rest. Do you have the shield of faith? Second Corinthians says, we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. So how I raise, so the shield of faith, see what it says. He said, taking it. it it's, it's something you can leave. He said, take it. Once the attack comes, you take the faith and, and raise it up. You are having a testimony and it's not complete. Satan says, can you see? I told you this will not happen. If you cannot confess, you will sing. Because it's the same thing. We are only saying the word in a song. Are you hearing me, somebody? The reason why is that some of you, the arrow has entered though. We must now remove the arrow. But that one is for next week. Hey, but now, so that there will be no new arrows. You marry one month in your marriage, you know you'll be divorced. Ah! I'm not sure the celebrity I saw online that they told her, let's pray. I'm out of time. You raise the shield of faith. How do you raise the shield of faith? Every time those thoughts come, you say back what the word of God says. You say back. That's the first. Let me teach you the second one quickly. You don't only say back. How did it come? Through thought and imagination, right? You go back. Very early in the morning or at night, you sit down. Put new thoughts in your mind. Begin to dream it. The thought says, you just see everything collapse. You just put new thoughts. How is growing? Put new thoughts. Why? The same way the old thought can be conceived, new thought can also conceive. You put it there. I'm telling you, every, almost every day of my life, I take time to, to imagine new things. Because I need to plant new things. We can't keep quiet. Though. Can you pray? This is no, this no matter of praying in tongues now. When I say pray, you know where you have been attacked. You begin to fire back. Raising the shield of faith. Get up and let's pray.